Hello, my name is Rebecca and welcome to Mornings at the Allotment. It's been raining, so we have the perfect conditions for me to perform my least favorite task that is part of my daily morning routine here at the plot. But before I start any of that, I really need a cup of tea. Perfect. I've had a few questions about why my channel is called Mornings at the Allotment. Up until March 2020, I had a two hour commute in the morning. So I left the house at about 6.30. Then when we went into lockdown the first time, I started working from home. But instead of sleeping in, I decided to get up at the same time and to spend my mornings down at the allotment, having my first cup of coffee. Apart from harvesting mange too and strawberries at this time of year, I have a few standard tasks that I take care of almost every day. So, um, it's still a bit soggy this morning and the slugs are still out and about on the plants which makes it harder to find them especially among the strawberries for example but we have a few strategies that we use to find them on normal days um, and i usually go around in the evenings or in the morning early mornings um, and i have several places where i know i'll find some and i'm going to show you those as much as i'd like to show you my morning routine as I do it. That's very hard to do without someone else behind the camera. Um, and it does take me up to two hours even without filming. So the footage you're about to see was taken over the past couple of days. The weather has always been like this. We've had rain and then dry spots in between and the temperatures haven't been too high. It's been overcast. So I was able to get quite a bit done in the mornings before. So this is one of the jobs that I take care of almost every morning when I can make the time. We have snails as well as slugs, but since many snails are protected, I just leave them all be. One effective way I trap slugs is to just leave dead plants strategically lying in the beds. I can usually find them on there in the early mornings or um, late evenings. These two have decided they want to eat our parsnips and we've had pretty bad germination, so no way am I going to let them. We use these boards as little pathways, but they're also perfect as slug traps. So disgusting. And my favorite slug trap is one I discovered by accident. We've been using cardboard as mulch and they like this even better than they like the wooden boards that, uh, that I put down. So I just come by in the morning and collect them here. All my squash and cucumbers are protected by these roughly cut pieces of rainwater pipes. And basically, that's a very easy um, thing to use because the slugs just don't go over the sharp edges. As you may have noticed in my May tour, some of my brassicas have also been hit hard by slugs. And so we went and added some more of these rings 
after the fact, and now they're doing well. Oddly enough, I planted lettuce in the same bed with the brassicas, hoping the slugs would eat the lettuce and leave the brassicas. Well, that certainly didn't work out because this is a beautiful head of lettuce. The second task I take care of every morning, weather permitting, is bindweed. Now the bindweed is so rampant that this is what happens when it rains and I miss a day. Some of our beds are particularly badly infested with bindweed, so I try to catch those and pull them out as soon as I find them before they get too big and the growth, top growth strengthens the root. But on a side note, I just wanted to show you this. Remember my tomato plants? Look at this. That looks really, really great. And I just saw, look. We're getting flowers. As long as I can still reach, I try to take out as much of the root as I possibly can. Of course, I have to be careful here not to disturb the roots of any of the um, crops I'm growing. Now, in the case of this little tomato, I know that the roots go this way because that's the way I planted it. So I'm going to try to get this out with a long piece of the root. Well, And I have to make sure I really get all of the roots because if I don't, they just start regrowing. So in the paths and anywhere where I won't hurt the roots of my crops, I try to dig up as much of the root as possible. Where I can't do that, I at least um, try to cut off all the top growth I can get to because in the end it's the top growth, the leaves, and the photosynthesis that will strengthen the roots. And if they can't do photosynthesis, the roots won't grow. So uh, those are the two ways. Dig out as much as you can, and then for the rest of it, weaken the roots the best you can. This is especially annoying because I know I just weeded this bed yesterday, or rather selective weeding of bindweed. And then I come back and I find this, which I obviously missed and which grew really fast. And when the temperatures allow, or on overcast days like today, I pick a bed and give it a thorough weeding. This bed was last weeded about four weeks ago, and now, especially the, the barge, which isn't that much of a problem, but the grass is growing back. So I'm going to be hand weeding this today. And the reason that I hand weed is that there's purslane growing in there. It self seeds here, it's airborne. Um, and it's very common in our region. And I want to leave the purslane in order to cover the ground so what I'm going to do is take out most of the barge, not all, take out all of the grass that's growing here. And then this bed will have beans and squash, but I'm leaving in the purslane, as I said, to cover the ground.
we've tried just hoeing but if you leave these on the ground they do root again so we really need to get them out I like to keep the borage in my beds just to attract the pollinators, but this borage is growing along the edge to our neighbors and they keep their grass very long. So we have a lot of slug pressure here and they like to hide under the borage leaves. So the barge has to come out here. This is the asparagus pea bed that I last weeded. Well, uh, I gave it a full weed three weeks ago before I planted the asparagus. And this is what it looks like today. Mostly borage, some grass, and you can see it, some bindweed as well. And this is what half an hour's weeding has left me with looking much better now. And in case you were wondering, this is what the asparagus looks like. The top growth that we had died down, but we're getting new leaves. So it looks like the roots are still alive and producing, and we'll get some nice healthy crowns here. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of an insight into what I do here on my mornings at the allotment. Um, what it doesn't show is how therapeutic this is for me. Um, I like being here first thing in the morning and I like being out in, well, it's not so much nature as um, culture, the garden, but um, we try to bring as much nature into it as we possibly can. And with all the bees and even the slugs, um, I do feel bad for killing them, but this is first and foremost um, the food we eat. Um, so I collect the slugs. I wish I could feed them to um, chickens or ducks, but we're not allowed to have them on site. Um, I leave the snails. I don't use slug pellets. Um, even the so-called organic ones um, that won't kill um, any of the wildlife that feed off the slugs. But um, Snails are protected in Germany and I don't even understand why they're allowed to sell slug pellets because they're eaten indiscriminately by slugs and snails. So um, if I use them, I risk killing the snails as well. And um, I want to give them the chance to find their spots in the garden. And so far they really haven't been a problem. Yeah, so... Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, even if it was a bit different from what I usually do. But I figured we all deal with pests and we all deal with weeds. So I wanted to show you um, what I do to deal with that on a daily basis. And also it is a big part of what I do here in the mornings. And that's where my channel got the name. So uh, I figured it was something I should share with you. So if you've enjoyed this and you're interested in seeing more, do come back for my next video. Subscribe to my channel to make it easier to find. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye.